Okay, shooting is going on the roof and we're using the rosebud nails that we made with our nail header on the forge. Um, I sort of miscalculated. I didn't take into consideration the veranda. So we're gonna have to go back to the bush and uh, select another pine tree because we need uh, enough uh, flooring for the veranda floor and to sheet the top. And then we're gonna start making our cedar shakes. So it's coming together. Um, another few weeks, we should have the cedar shakes on the roof. Okay, so uh, when one builds without a blueprint and uh, the only plan is in your head, there are a few screw ups. And at the onset, I knew that I had to leave these top sill logs the same length as my purlins, but I didn't. I cut them off the same as the log. So we have to cobble something up to support this. Um, and then of course our veranda uh, rafters are gonna come off about a foot up to give us about six and a half feet of head clearance at the front of the porch. So in the overhang I've got here, uh, I'll be cutting this off. After I've got it all sheeted, I'll get a nice straight line and cut that off about an inch outside of my, my truss. And uh, yeah, that'll make a lot of material for birdhouses. I think we've got about 60 birdhouses in the woodlot now. And by the time I've done this construction, we're gonna have enough material for 60 more. Okay, I'm getting warmed up here a bit, and I think I'll brew myself up a pot of coffee if I can bust through the ice. So an interesting thing about beverages in the 18th century is the, the uh, chocolate drink was uh, without question the most popular. And it was a very bitter drink and they would sweeten it with honey or syrup. Uh, often they would spice it. Uh, I have tried it, it's, it's pretty hard. They, they, Nick's most popular was tea. And contrary to the myth, it wasn't brick tea. And, Sadly, for years doing living history, I was under the belief that I was doing it period correct by having brick tree uh, tea on my treks and camps and what have you. And I'd, I'd scrape off this stuff into a pot, billy pot and boil it up and it's the worst beverage one could ever drink. But the actual fact is the tea that came from China was uh, loose leaf tea. It was shipped in, in cases of about 360 pounds of box, often lead lined crates. So that uh, Boston Tea Party, those American fellows had down there, they, uh, they weren't throwing brick tea into the harbor, they were throwing loose tea. So coffee, which is my preferred beverage, wasn't very common and it wasn't very popular. It didn't become popular until the American Civil War, around the American Civil War, mid 1800s. 
but it was available. And when it was sold, it was shipped, sold, and purchased as a green bean, as you see here. So it wasn't roasted. So the process of making one's coffee was one had to roast it. And they were just dry roasted in a pan. And you would roast it to the point um, darkness that you wanted. So the darker you roast it, um, the stronger the coffee. It uh, basically is like making popcorn. Okay, they're starting to roast up now. Another four or five minutes and they'll be just about the strength that uh, I prefer my coffee. And then I'm going to put them in my little deer skin uh, bag over here and I'll pulverize it and get it brewing up in my coffee pot. So there's a camp rule to making good coffee. Essentially, it's got to spew out the spout three times. Not once, not twice, but three times. When it's spewed out three times, coffee's perfect to drink. Okay, there's the third spew. That coffee is done to perfection. That's a good cup of coffee. Ah, that was good. I'm mugged up, I'm warmed up, and uh, I'm gonna get a few more boards on before the sun goes down.
So I'm doing a bit of sunbathing right now. It's uh, mid-afternoon and it's been a snapping cold uh, night and day here. Um, what I'm sitting on here are going to be the uprights for the veranda. So I finished the roof now, was going to shingle it, but the veranda is the next thing up on the agenda. And once it's completed, uh, I will shingle the hole and put my cedar shakes in the whole, whole cabin and veranda. So I've got to start four fires. Uh, I got to get it squared up first measured and squared up and then I'm going to start four fires. I should have done this two months ago before the ground froze for these four uprights to go into. I cut my roof rafters today for the veranda and I decided to bring up a couple of the tops and put them out in front of the cabin. Uh, they're only out there about 15 yards or so and see if the deer are bold enough to come in tonight. Hopefully, uh, hopefully I get to see some deer right at dusk. 